truly is. He truly is. This atmosphere has already been set to the standard that I asked the Father for on this morning. And for that, I am so, so grateful, so grateful. First, I would like to give honor to my pastors, AWC. We have the best pastors. Yes, we do. They are so encouraging. They encourage you in the Lord. They encourage you sometimes when you don't know how to encourage yourself, you know. And um, on behalf of AWC, we are truly, truly grateful, truly grateful for you all. Amen. Yes, God. I would like to start out with just praying. Father God, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for another day. Thank you, God, that you have given me, God, this opportunity, God, to share the word with your people, Lord. Lord, light me on fire, God. Take Tawana out and put you in, Father God. Speak through me, Father God, in the way, Lord, that you want me to speak, Father God. Lord, we thank you and we give you the praise, God, and we honor you, Father God. And we know, God, that there is nobody like you, God. You can do it, Father God, even when we don't know how to do it ourselves. And God, just because of that alone at this second, we want to say thank you. Thank you. And it is so. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So um, this series has been uh, truly, truly <laughs> a uh, victorious series. You know, we are in the fight for our lives, and God is doing just some great things here at AWC, and I'm excited to see all of these things that God is going to continue to do in our lives. Amen. So we are going to come from the book of Samuel, and before we get there, um, it's going to be the book of Samuel, the 30th chapter, and we're going to read a little bit from there. But before we get there, I want to talk about David. Amen. So as I was doing my research about David, David is the third king of the united monarchy of Israel and Judah. He became the king after Ishbaf. In the book of Samuel, David is a young shepherd who gains fame, or he gains fame first as a musician and later by slaying the enemy, Goliath. He wrote many songs in the book of Psalms, many songs in the book of Psalms, and he even had a particular, um, I use the word hater, I don't even know if that word is for so used anymore, but hater, we'll say that. Yeah, okay, named Saul. Saul, he was hating on David for about 13 years, trying to destroy him because he was jealous, right? So the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart, right? David was powerful. Every battle he would win, hands down. It was almost as the victory had been played into his hands. David kind of had like the Midas touch. You know, everything he touched turned into gold, Right, you're not a man called after God's own heart unless you have a strong anointing form of spirit over your life. Right, so the Lord was usually using David for this particular reason. Now, David also seeked after a married woman named Bathsheba. Bathsheba. She was married to a soldier named Uriah, and you can read a little bit more about it in 2 Samuel chapter 11. David coordinated something to have Uriah killed in war to block him from being, um, you know, in the way. So basically David wanted to cover up what him and Uriah's wife had done, which they had conceived a baby. You know, they committed adultery. Right, so a lot of us try to cover up something so that we don't look bad or so you wouldn't find out or so someone else wouldn't find out or you're being sneaky about something, right? So I know back then, you know, killing somebody was, as you say, a little bit over the top. But how about now? 
are you cheating on someone and you want, don't want to hide it or you want to hide it? Are you turning a blind eye when something happens and you don't say anything when something is wrong? Come on, we've all been there. Yes. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. Amen. So we all mess up. There's no such thing as being perfect. You know, we're willing to fall down and get back up. But when you get back up, you should be stronger and you should also be wiser. We can thrive and strive to become perfect, but we have to count each mistake as a lesson. Amen. It's always thought, or I've always thought, being in the body of Christ or being a Christian or a spiritual person or a believer, whatever name you want to put on it, I always thought you had to be this holy roller type of person as you will you know I always thought oh my gosh you know these people are going to church so they're speaking in tongues every day and they're bathing in this clear water you know th that was my my own narrative of how and what I thought a Christian or spiritual persons person to be but after reading the Bible I've learned that there's different things and everybody has their own type of character and that's why I love learning about the men and women in the Bible because it shows me their characteristics and in most cases a lot of things haven't changed but the time but we are all human and we mess up and we make mistakes and that's okay but you live and you learn for another day Amen. So, 1 Samuel 16 and 7. And it reads, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at the appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see us as man sees us. A man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, can I testify just a little bit? So I'm what you call, or what I say, a baby in Christ. All this is new for me. Never in my wildest dreams could I have ever imagined me standing here and doing this. Now, now mind you, I've, I, I do have a, a praying grandparent and Paying, praying grandparents and you know in the past and I've gone to vacation Bible school and as a child I knew of Jesus but as an adult I strayed I mean maybe I would pray when things got bad or maybe I would go to church you know maybe every quarter but I'm saying this to encourage someone because sometimes what you think, what you see, is not always the picture that is painted. Amen. I've been through a lot. I've been through heartaches and headaches and deception and a lot of humiliation and even a little bit of jail time and even a little bit of violence and deception and alcoholism. And I'm also a felon, but the Lord is going to get that expunged in January and I didn't have to pay for an attorney to get that. Hallelujah. So never judge a book by its cover, amen? If you suffer dark days and if you also suffer dark nights, hang on in there. The Lord, too, will also see you through. He will set your path. He will take you to places that you could not have ever imagined in your life. So when you look at me, don't judge me. Don't think that I think I'm this or maybe you think that she thinks she's all that. But I am all that in the Lord because he has brought me from a mighty, mighty long way and I continue to give my life to God and to do things differently than what I've done before and to ask God to give me the power and the strength and the courage. If you're fearful, be fearful. Just do it anyway. Just have the courage to step out and just know that God will support you and God will see you through. Just be obedient and trust in the Lord. Yes, God. Now that I got that out, let's talk a little bit more about David. Amen. So David was also the youngest of eight sons. He was the son of Jesse, a farmer. Uh, he was a sheep breeder. Amen. David likely, he spent most of his time in his boyhood teaching um, or tending to his family's flock. 
One day he was summoned from the fields by the prophet named Samuel, who anointed him to be the king of Israel, while Saul was still the king at that time. David, he was rejected by his brothers. Um, you know, they didn't even bring David out when the prophet Saul was there. You know, David, you know, they were like, oh, that's David. You know, he, he tends to the sheep. He runs errands. He was the underdog. Right, David was overlooked but rose up against all odds. God saw the best in him when nobody else did. Amen. God tested David during the 15 years between the time of his anointing and reassuring him the powers. Before God blesses someone or give them authority of any kind, he tests them over a period of time. Amen. God, he looks on the heart of man and not on the outward appearance, as he reiterated to Saul. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding, as stated in Proverbs 3 and 5. Amen. So now we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, and we're going to read verse 1, and this is in the King James Version. As it came to pass, when David and his men were to come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. When the youthful David fell into disfavor with King Saul, who allegedly tried to spear him, he fled to the Palestines. The Palestine king, Ashk of Gath, allowed David to move to Ziklag, which accordingly became the base for him to build up forces. So Ziklag became the base for David to build up forces. Ziklag is the place David left his wives and kids and all of the other soldiers and families. They were under supervision, but the supervision was not strong enough for the ambush that was about to take place. David was in Ziklag because he was running from Saul because Saul was trying to kill him because of jealousy, right? David, while fleeing from King Saul, he joined the Palestinians, accent Israel's bitter, they were Israel's bitter enemies. With 600 men and their families, David presented himself as the king, to the king of Palestine, the city of Gath, and asked for Aslam Ash gave David the town of Giglag, Ziglag, and David lived there a year and four months. David wanted to serve God and at the right time take over the kingdom. David was balanced between meekness and power. He did things very strategically, right? When David came in from battle, the women began, began to praise him more than Saul. Saul couldn't take it. This was the natural process of God turning the hearts of the people of Israel to their new king. So Saul couldn't take people liking David. You know, that's their form of jealousy. You know, David was getting the shine and Saul not so much, right? If Saul was right with God, he would have not been jealous. He would have been happy for this. He would have offered David a little bit more gratitude, but instead Saul tried to kill David many times and continued to be jealous. Amen. As we go to 1 Samuel 30, 2 and 6, we'll read, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were there with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Anomim and the Zerzerites, and Abigail and the wife of Nabal and Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were grieved. 
every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. The Amalekites were never good people in the Bible. They were always wicked and devious individuals. The Amalekites were one of the fiercest enemy that Israel have ever had. They were specialists in preying on the vulnerability that went, they went after weaknesses, not your strength. That's why they took the women and the children. They wasn't bad enough to fight the men. They went after the weakness of Israel to destroy it. They were ungodly. They were the arch enemies of David and his men. But the Malachites came in, hit them below the belt, burned the village down, and took everything they had. And this, this all happened in Ziklag. Ziklag is a place where things start to happen that you don't want them to happen. It's like one thing after the next. Ziklag is the place in your life where you're fighting this devil over here. Here come this other devil. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just when you feel like you're going to get through or you feel like you can push forward, something happens and it takes you back. Ziglag is the place you are compounded by adversity. You are pushed to your breaking point. You must understand that fighting is exhausted. Even if you win, you still have some damage. Some people are impressed with the armor, but they don't see what lies beneath. If you want restoration, you have to be willing to fight for it with the power of God that is on your side. Because in Ziglag, you don't know what's about to go down. You just got to get ready for the war. You just got to get ready to fight. You just ready to got to say, devil, try me if you want to. So just be ready for the combat. So David comes back home from the battle looking for conflict, comfort, but he runs into conflict. When the men came back and saw that all of their wives and all of their kids were gone, they wanted to kill David. Now his own people turned against him. It be your own people. Now David is injured again because he's betrayed. He's betrayed that these people that served under him is now insulting him, and they're not being believable to him. They're in disbelief about David. That's one most insulting thing you can do to a leader is not have faith in them. Faith is powerful. You can't take faith away. You have to trust and believe in your, your leader. So I can understand how this can be devastated for David. And David sat down in despair. Come, I want you to imagine all of this happening. Think of something or a zigzag that has happened in your life, or maybe it's something that you're going through right now. And think about this, how David can sit down in despair, and he almost gave up, and he got to the point where he was ready to die, and he was ready to collapse on the floor, and he said to himself, I can't take this anymore. I'm sick and tired, Lord, of being sick and tired. And anybody have those moments when you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired and you don't know what's going to happen and you don't understand why is this happening and you don't know, God, I don't know why this is happening to me. I, I can't believe it. David is like, what's going on here? We, we didn't stick together, but we did stick together, and we didn't have anybody, and we, we fought these battles, and, and, we, and we won. But as David is crying out to the Lord, and I would imagine sobbing and saying, Father, help me. Help me, Lord, to, to get through this. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. So let's talk about encouraging yourself in the Lord. What does that look like? How can you encourage yourself in the Lord when you are in that zigzag type of situation? First, I'm going to tell you to speak life. Proverbs 18, 21 says, words kill, words give life. You're either poison or fruit. 
You choose. So when you speak life, you say, Father God, I decree and I declare for me to get out of this situation. God, help me, Father God, get through this. I know, Father God, that you have a future for my possibilities, Father God, and get me up off this floor, Father God, and give me strength to help myself. And then you got to pray for joy. As it says in Proverbs 10, 28, the prospect of the righteousness is joy, but the hopes of the wicked it comes to nothing. So you say, Father God, there's joy on the end. Although I'm going through this situation right now, Lord, I know that you will bring me out. Lord, I know that it's going to be hallelujah anyhow. I know that this circumstance is happening, but Father God, it's only temporary. And because it's only temporary, God, get me through and, and get me out. <laughs> These are things that we need to say and need to tell people to do when they're going through a zigzag type of situation. And then after that, you take good fellowship. Proverbs 19 and 2, desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feel your feet miss away? So desire with knowledge is not good. So you call your prayer warriors. You ask your pastors to help me through this. I have a situation going on, so I need some help. So God will bring us to deep levels of brokenness before he advances us to abundant levels of blessings. Everybody wants the power, but nobody wants the process. We have to walk through the brokenness in order to get to the victory. We have to walk through the brokenness to get to the victory. As we move on to Samuel, the 30th chapter, this is going to be Samuel 7 through 10. It reads, and David said to Ashbetar the priest, Ashmet's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abadar brought the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after the troops? Shall I overtake them? And he answered them, Pursue, for thou shalt surely take them, and without fail, recover all. So David went, and the 600 men that were with him came back to the brook Versa, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they cannot even continue. Now God has given David permission to pursue. We know something is about to happen, given God can't lose, and God gave him permission to reclaim all of those things that the enemy has taken. When the enemy takes things from you, ask God how to get it back. I've lost some things, but I'm taking it back. Try me, devil, if you're bold enough. But however, I'm taking it back because the Lord said so. In 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, we're going to read 17 through 20. David fought them from dusk to dawn until the evening of the next day. None of them got away. None of them got away except 400 young men who rolled off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder of anything else had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds, and his men drove them ahead of the livestock, saying, David's plunder. So sometimes things are burning down around you, but God knows more than you know. 
Some people walk away when the fire is lit, but you strengthen yourself in the Lord and you pursue when the Lord says pursue. When people turn on you and they show you who they are, accept that and ask God to continue to show you the way so that you can navigate through the system. When you have to disconnect from people and walk away without looking back, ask God to help me, God, continue to look forward so that I don't have to look back. When you can't see clear through the smoke, continue to go through the smoke and say, God, clear my pathway. God, help me get through these things that I can't get through. Although I can't physically see it now, Father God, but I'm going to reach on to your cloth and I know that you are God and lead the way. When the trick of the enemy comes and make you feel like you are on qualified, you say, I rebuke you, enemy, because I know the Lord has given me the authority to be qualified. But when it's zigzag, we forget sometimes. But I decree and declare right now that there's going to be a zigzag situation. And if you're through a zigzag situation, God, help me through this situation. We know that God has purpose in your life. And because God has purpose in your life, there's other things that he wants to manifest and he wants to give to you. So why not ask God to help me through my battle? Because God calls things that are not as though they were seen. And we have the power to make and decree and declare the things that God has given us the victory for. (laughs) Now turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm coming out of this thing. And if you don't believe that you're coming out of this thing, continue to say, I'm coming out of this thing. People, we have the desire and the prosperity to get through zigzag. But when you come through zigzag, be ready to come back. Be ready to fight. Be ready to declare those things that the enemy has taken away from you. But when God is on your side, Uh, there's no stopping you because you can be untouchable. You say, devil, try me today. Devil, try me tomorrow because I'm ready for comeback because you can't touch me because you can't have my victory. Although it may seem like tomorrow is not promised, but I come to tell you that tomorrow is promised and the next day is promised and the day after that is promised. Just like God God said, David, you're going to be king. He's looking in your life and said, what's next for you? What's going to happen for you next? So I'm coming to tell you that get off of your post and trust in the Lord. Although it may look like what you think it's going to look like, stand clear. Be on post. Ask God to help you. Ask God to strengthen you. Ask God to give you the power. And when you have the power of victory. All things are possible. Anything is possible. Get up out of your slumber and say, Lord, help me. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Say, God, I surrender all. Although, Father God, my words don't articulate what my mind is trying to say, but God, you know what it is that you want to do in my life. You know what it is how you want to use me when nobody else wanted to use me. Lord, you know how it is when I come and I stretch my hands to thee and I say, Father, help me. When I come down and I sit on my bed late at night when nobody is there and I say, Father God, show me the way. Father God, I'm going through a zigzag type of situation, but I, I know that you will see me through. I know, Father God, that you will help me. I know, Father God, that I'm here to fix others' lives, although they don't know right now, but God, I know, because Lord, you told me, you told me that you will see me through. You told David that 
but you'll see him through. Huh? And you didn't let him down. Huh? And I know you're not going to let me down. Huh? Because, Lord, I trust in you. Huh? Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I know without a shadow of a doubt huh, that you will see me through. In Ziklag, huh? in Tampa, huh? in Florida, huh? in Chicago, huh? wherever it may be that you're watching me on these airways, huh? just know that God will also see you through. Hang on in there just a little bit while longer. Hang on in there just a little while longer. It's been 10 years, that's okay. Hang on in there just a little bit longer. It's been 20 years, that's okay. Hang in there just a little bit longer. If he did it for somebody who's 80, if he did it for somebody who's 90, imagine what he can do for you. My God, my God, help your people. My God, my God, send us more joy. Because, Father God, we know that you want joy in our lives so that we can spread it to the community, so that we can spread it to our families. Who else is in a zigzag type of situation? Who else has been in a zigzag situation? I'm here to encourage you that God will see you through your zigzag situations. I'm coming out of this place. I'm coming out of this place. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out of this place. Type in the messages, I'm coming out of this place. Say it out loud. I'm coming out of this place. Sometimes we get in the heat of the battle and the struggle of life. We feel like we're fighting for our lives in some way. We get complacent or maybe we get overconfident when we handle decisions. Handle your decisions. But before you handle your decisions, consult God. Ask God to help you. Ask God to fight your battles. Consult with the Father. Ask God the question, God, should I pursue? God, give me the armor that I need to pursue on this fight. God, I know the fight is not mine, but it's yours. But because it's yours, God, I know they may be buffed and they may look like they bigger than me, but just like David took the sling and he killed Goliath, we're coming to kill those things in our lives that needs to be killed. We're here to kill those things in our families and generational curses that needs to be killed. It needs to be buried. It needs to be destroyed. We need to put on more armor of God and consult with our father and then pursue like our life depends on it. Pursue like everything around us depends on it. Rebuke, rebuke, rebuke because your life depends on it. Open up your mouths when things get rough and rebuke it because your life depends on it. I rebuke poverty because my life depends on it. We shall overcome whatever it is circumstance may be. We shall overcome whatever it is, Father, you want us to overcome. Embrace the process. Tell the enemy, say, keep it up because I'm going through the grace of God. Keep it up. Is that all you got? I fought you before. I won the battle before. So keep it up, enemy, because you're pushing me to my purpose in God. You're pushing me to the purpose that I couldn't even imagine that was imaginable. You're pushing me to my wildest dreams. You're pushing me to destiny. You're pushing me to become a millionaire. You're pushing me for all the things in life that I thought that I couldn't get. Tell the devil to keep it up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it because God's got you. His love is everlasting. His grace is sufficient. We have the power to conquer any and everything. So what? 
they didn't believe in you. So what? They gave up on you. So what? You didn't pass that test. So what? That diagnosis is what they said it was going to be. I come decree and declare that God gave us the power to declare things in our mouths. And we count it all joy. And we say hallelujah anyhow. Let him fight for you. Let him fight for you. Stop trying to fight fights that you're not strong enough to fight and conquer on your own. The battle is not yours, but it is God's. It is the Lord's, and he will fight him for you. Him and them for you. Ask God to grant you with permission. God, give us permission. Order our steps, Father. Order our steps, Lord, because our steps are to be ordered by you. David got back everything. He didn't lose a drop. And I come to tell you that God doesn't want us to lose a drop. We don't need to lose anything because he has given us everything that we absolutely need. If he has not done anything for you, just say that he's done enough for me. And I want to say, God, thank you, Father God, for showing your grace and your mercy, God, to our lives, Father God. God, because without you, Father God, there's nothing, God, that, that we can not do, Father God, because you are merciful, God, and you are wonderful, Father God. So as I close on today, on this morning, I just want to once again encourage you and ask you, are you willing to trust God 100%? Even though your naked eye or with your naked eye, it may seem unrealistic to you. How are you going to trust God in unrealistic situations with your own eye? How are you going to trust him? On tonight, I challenge you. I challenge you to ask God, whatever it is, Father God, that those dreams that I've dreamt before and they became dormant, Father God, I'm asking you, Lord, to, to bring them back to life, to bring them, Father God, to reality, Lord. I challenge you on the night just to give God a little bit more time and ask God for healing and for insight so that you can know that those things that has died should come back to life. When your thoughts begin to wander and you're wondering sometimes if you're in a zigzag situation, if God is going to see you through, just trust and encourage yourself just like David did. Don't give up because he's not going to give up on you. He didn't give up on you. And because he did not give up on you, please don't give up on him. God is wanting us. He's thirsty for us to ask him to help us fight this bat these battles. And as I leave you with these two scriptures, I'm going to actually read Psalms 144 and 1. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Psalms 18 and 39. You are armed me with strength for battle. You humbled my adversities before me. And I just want that to sit there just a little bit. And as I close and as I pray, ask yourself, what are those unrealistic expectations? And put them in your mind and let them start to grow within your mind and your head. And Ask God to have favor on your life as though he had it in David's. Father God, I want to say thank you, God, for this, this opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence, Father God. God, as you continue to heal the land and heal your people, Father God, God, I'm asking, Lord, that someone will take this word on today, Father God, and encourage themselves, Lord, and not give up on themselves, Father God. And Lord, we're asking, Lord, that 
all of those things, God, that we have lost before, God. We're decreeing and declaring, God, that we're going to get it back. God, we know that all things are possible through your word and all things are possible, Father God, through your strength and through your grace and through your mercy, Father God. Touch and heal right now, God. Open up the minds, Father God, of your people, God. Let them know, Father God, that with you, God, we can trust you, God. With you, Father God, we can do anything because we have the power, God, and you've given us the power, Father God. And God, touch right now. And we ask in all of these things in your name, Jesus. Amen.